questions about the influence of the spirit of John Cassavetes on this film or Holly? Woman on the Influence, I was watching it in a theater up in the suburbs where I grew up. Uh, you know, and there was four people in the theater. <laughs> Me, the girl I was with, and this guy who was exactly the character of the movie and the girl he was with in the whole theater. And then I'm out, outside, you know, you know, to get, you know, like with those movies you have to take a walk every once in a while. And the guy's out in the back of me going, you like this piece of shit? You know, I was like, you know, yeah, I'm gonna say, what, it's great. I go, I don't know, you know, it's a little confused. You know, I, I thought I was in a movie that's playing in the theater next door. He goes, this is what I come to every night. This is my, you know, this is what I get put up with every day. This is like this guy saying, this is my life, exactly. Who the fuck wants to pay and watch that crap? <laughs> <laughs> that was great. But, um, but does everybody like Jess of Eddie's? Jim? Yeah, um, you know, the cabaret is the, um, is the, 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 the surprise. What is it? The, um, uh, you know, like, um, was a, the Forrest Whitaker film that um, that plays the soldier that the gay, you know, um, crying, 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 crying game. game, you know. So like, you know, the producer we had, um, Massimo Gatti, who is, you know, anybody who puts up all the money for film out of his own pocket, I would love for the rest of his life and mine, no matter, you know, what a nightmare they sometimes get. Because like, they'll come up with the wackiest things to say, like, we should have a surprise like, did you see Crying Game? Yeah. We should have a surprise like that. <laughs> it's like halfway through the movie. Okay, where's the surprise? <laughs> she throws the film upside down. <laughs> anyway, but the fact is, I didn't want to tell them there was a surprise. And the surprise is these girls are not really dancers. They're not go-go dancers, but they're, you know, have a dream and they have a talent. And, you know, so if somebody says, well, that she can't dance or her tits are too small, you know, my composer kept saying, but aren't you going to get girls with big tits? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> you know, they would say, well, they weren't go-go dancers anyway. One's a magician, and one's a ballerina, and one is something else. And the fact that he can't pay the rent is because if he spent as much energy, you know, working the topless side of his club and forgot the, you know, the magi you know, you don't want to go and see a girl that looks like that magician in a tuxedo. I don't even know what she was doing. Like, she took a bag, like they told me she was this brilliant magician. Then when we did it, right, she took a bag, she took something out of it. I mean, magic don't really go over too big in films anyway. You know, like, they, they were doing magic on a radio. <laughs> but anyway, it was, it was, I think, the crux of the movie. And we were going to, and the thing of changing the place over, you know, we had talked about that for like eight years. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's like, you know, it's really, I tell you, it's the one rewarding thing is when you get a movie that you can't finance. Or sometimes you have movies that you make more money not making them. Because we, we sold the script a few dozen times. And now we can't sell it anymore. <laughs> because we made it. Yeah. Now we're talking about the camera. Because that really was special. No, I think you said it. I mean, I, I think the setup is there are all these women that are lap dancers, and then kind of see it through, everything has kind of like a dark dark side and then a kind of jokey commerce side and race like that too, going back to the um, Killing the Giant Chinese Bookie and Broadway Danny Rose, they're kind of both uh, portraits of, you know, hustlers or <laughs> dreamers that are trying to slip the noose. One's very dark <laughs> and one's a little jokey, you know? It had, I think it was the flip side to the, uh, gyrating girl. In every gyrating girl, there's a ballerina. I mean, I think that's what's uh, <laughs> happening. <laughs> and uh, that's also the sweet side, the humanizing side of what Ray Ruby says we can be. And in that, that end speech, I mean, he's half in, he's half out. That's what I was really attractive about the character, you know? He wants to believe really badly that something good can happen out of this. This is the art side, this is the spiritual side, this talent 
this evening show. And the other side is Lincoln Center. Like getting along the day, you know? <laughs> getting along in the day. The show must go on. Uh, the sequence in which the Italian boy is in the club having a great time, then suddenly sees his wife there. It's his wife there, yeah. <laughs> Who, uh, talk about that scene. Who thought of it? I think the screenwriter came up with it. <laughs> but I might be wrong. Um, yeah, you know, that's the joke. Okay, you having a good time in one of these clubs? Well, what if it's your sister up there? You know what I mean? And uh, I don't know, it's just one of those scenes. But, you know, when we did it, we had uh, Hoskins, who's really a special like all these guys. But there's a certain kind of, um, what do you call it? Like, you know, uh, like cheesemo, right? That just comes with the male actors that we work with. That somehow, you know, I mean, I'm going to, I guess I have to do some kind of violent action film next. But, you know, Will gets his rocks up, but some of these guys don't. So now, this kid who is, um, um, Ricardo Scamacho, who's a very big, big actor, he's like the new, uh, I don't want to say, um, Marcello Mastriani, but, you know, I didn't even know he was an actor, he was the boyfriend of, um, um, Valeria Galina, and, um, then, you know, his movie comes out where he plays, like, the heartthrob to these two teenage girls, and it does, like, phenomenal business, so he's like, the, but he's more than that, he's a friend of mine, and I really like to work with him, but any, but, the point being is, um, um, wait a minute, I didn't get the scene of seeing your sister up there. The yeah, and he was going to do, yeah, he comes in and, oh no, the guys are one tough, so now they are going to fight. Now we don't have, you know, our stunt guys are not there. You know, we're going to have a little fight. Okay. Yeah, but, no, but yeah, right. So you say action, and all of a sudden, Hoskins comes flying over the balcony, grabs this kid, slams him. Nikki D is, you know, four guys are kicking him. Even the guys who are extras in the play. Oh, cut. <laughs> guys, this is a comedy. <laughs> First of all, if you take the guy, put him in a headlock, pull his coat over his head, you know, we got our big star from our big Italian star, and he's under five people. And he can't say a word, you know what I mean? So, like, you know, that's what was funny about it, you know. They, 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 Hoskins had it. He kept saying to me, so I'll get someone crack in the face that went so on. He said, well, don't start hitting anybody the first day. You know? so, that was funny. And then she almost knocks him over. She starts abusing this poor kid. It's a good thing he doesn't speak English. She's like, you're an amateur. You almost knocked me over here. He's trying to protect himself from getting killed. Yeah, I'm afraid that's all we have time for. I want to thank Abel.